<laughs> Greetings, Ranger Geeks and Morphing Freaks. Welcome to the Morphomania podcast. It's time to recap and review another three episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1. With us, the Prince Justice Brotherhood's non-union multiracial equivalents. Good God, Prince Justice Brotherhood? <laughs> I love the Prince Justice Brotherhood. Who was that? Super Eric? That was, that was Man, Super Eric. And Curry Shark Man, Boy. Eric Boy, yeah. Stone Cold Joy. Give me a shield, yeah. Why am I not aware of this? TNA where you don't want to watch era TNA. It's still peak TNA somehow. Back to the intro. He's a frog. I'm a frog. Got him! It's humanoid. <laughs> Unlike Adam from the show, I actually liked the frog. I don't know what he was complaining about. <laughs> oh my god. He's Dewan Energy McDaniel. <laughs> Fuck sakes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a deep cut personal reference. Fuck sakes. <laughs> Well, you're welcome. And it's me, Mighty Morphin Mark Heenahan. Ooh. I'm glad you asked. Mark Heenahan, because we're never going to talk about him. He's never in Power Rangers. Here's a quick sidebar. Mark Heenahan, a man who's been in film and video games as far as I can re I can remember. Some of his most recent work is voice acting in video games such as Outcast A New Beginning and Alan Wake 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Alan. Alien Isolation. Let's play a little game. Do you want to play? I'm going to give you a list of some of his credits, and you're going to tell me which one doesn't belong. <laughs> one of these things just doesn't belong here. One of these kids is dead. Here we go. Here, here's some of his movies that he's been in. Uh, a Room with a View. A River Runs Through It. Oh, I know that. I've seen that. That's he played the uh, fly fishing movie about the brother who has a gambling problem, played by Brad Pitt. Yes, and he plays a character named Mr. Daniel Granger. Oh, I was thinking of the River Wild. Never mind. Four Weddings and a Funeral. Haven't seen it. I know about it. <laughs> the original, or no, I'm thinking of Death at a Funeral, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's 1994. And Death uh, at a Funeral, which one? The French or the American version? It's no, British is... or original. Blade. He, he's uncredited. He plays the club patron. What are the club play? Okay, the be okay, I'm guessing the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah the beginning, probably. yeah. The Green Mile. Oh, where? who was he in there? I saw that. He's, he's one of the guards in The Green Mile. Okay. Requiem for a Dream. Haven't seen Holy it. Shit. I know about it. I want to see it. He plays a character named Scotty. The, the final one, his most consistent role, a role he played on a TV series for 193 episodes. This guy's motherfucking Tinky Winky from the Teletubbies. Okay. He's the gay one then. <laughs> no, Tinky Winky is the purple one. Yeah, the purple one's a gay one, right? No, I the thought green the purple one was one. the leader. The, the purple one was the leader. The green one's the gay one. Oh, the green one's the gay one. <laughs> okay, all right. Doll accused of being gay. Calls the purple Teletubby named Tinky Winky a gay role model. <laughs> and the and the uh, the red one did lesbian porn. Oh, dear God, no! Oh, hold up. <laughs> Stop Today on the pod, we are covering the epic two-parter, which ends a magnificent era for the show, Doomsday. Doomsday Day, Doom, baby. Doom, 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 doom. So Doomsday is a character doom, 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 in Superman doom, doom, doom. and Lois uh, oh, that is played you. by Nina. <laughs> I was gonna make that joke. I was gonna say, well, Doomsday is a Doomsday is a villain from Superman, and what was he? He was a big rock. Not the day. God damn it, that's actually really good because. I don't exactly know what Doomsday is made out of, but those like rocks that are part of him are like. Isn't he yeah, supposed to be hell? made of kryptonite? Um, I don't think he's made of kryptonite, but I do know the white daggers do like, or the the white rock formations on him do damage Superman, like because of his Kryptonian biology. Because Doomsday was basically an experiment um, by Kryptonian scientists. Years and years, like millions of years before Kryptonians were Kryptonians. He was basically created as an infant and then just dropped in the middle of like Kryptonian uh, woods or whatever, like uh, the wilderness. And the infant just died over and over and over again. And uh, they kept cloning it until eventually it gained the evolutionary ability to... Anytime it died, 
it would become immune to that cause of death when it was brought back to life. That's why mm-hmm, Doomsday yeah. was uh, the man to kill Superman. Yeah, we're covering Doomsday. Go ahead and tell us about Doomsday, Malcolm. Doomsday, parts one and two, were released uh, November 29th <laughs> and November 30th in 1993, respectively, and were written by Stuart St. John and everyone's favorite director, Terrence H. Winkless. Look, I give, I give the guy a really hard time, but let's be real. I actually do enjoy these episodes that he's directed, so. Yeah. Except for one, but that wasn't his fault. So, Doomsday Part 1 opens at Angel Grove High with uh, the five goody goods walking through the hallway, reading a newspaper, and talking about, and basically, uh, stroking their own dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> Well, yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly. Because they're excited because uh, the mayor has officially announced that today is Power Ranger Day. It really gives Uh, full staring naked into the mirror vibes. Would you fuck me? I fuck you. Goodbye, horses. (laughs) I fuck me hard. (laughs) Fuck's sake. Uh, Well, it didn't take long for this podcast to unravel. Yep. Dude, it unraveled during the intro. (laughs) Anyway, so, yeah, it's Power Ranger Day, and all of the goody goods are excited because they get to basically get get uh very excited for the uh, for everyone and everyone's going to be very excited for them uh they leave the scene and bulk and skull come down the stairs skull asks bulk uh so what's this plan you're talking about bulk bulk says shut the fuck up <laughs> and uh, <laughs> tells him to follow him tells skull to follow him and they both go behind a pillar and a, a auspicious conspicuous pillar <laughs> And they just have a little pep talk. And basically, the logic is, you know, the Power Rangers are pass- are passe. But the new superheroes that are going to arrive later today at the Power Rangers ceremony, they're the real deal. Bobby oh, Lashley, who is indeed the real deal. And Skull goes like, what superheroes? And then he says, Wish.com superheroes, that's who. We cut to Bandora Castle, where Rita has also learned that the Power Ranger Day festivities are in full swing. Why don't we give them a little surprise, she says. Babu says, Those will be any little sweeties, meatball. God damn it, Bob. <laughs> Fucking Bab- Babu is the greatest character in this series at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, everything he says is hilarious. Yeah. I don't think that changes, too. I'm very glad that that's the case. And Rita says, no, we're not going down there to eat. We're going down there so that, uh, we're going down there so that Goldar can absolutely decimate the Power Rangers with his own Zord, Cyclopsis. Right, Cyclopsis. Okay, I forgot his name uh, when I was re-watching this. I, I just put it as Evil Gundam. Evil Gundam. <laughs> she said the name, Cyclopsis. No, I mean, I blanked. I like shit. It's like, no, nah, Evil Gundam's better. <laughs> Evil Gundam is better. <laughs> also, Scorpina's there, again. Doing nothing. And again, she does nothing. Yeah. Unfortunately. But yeah, Cyclopsis is Goldar's Zord. Uh, I'll continue this logic when we actually see him. We cut to Angel Grove Park. Or actually, no, we cut to the internet because there's just a series of tubes. There's a revolution going on in rec rooms. Off- They're sharing scientific data, arguing philosophy. Computer network called internet oh okay. i get it the tubes outside yeah, yeah. The, in- the internet's a series of tubes yes yes do you guys have any logic that could be used as to why these tubes are here uh for the kids uh, uh is it like is it just meant to be a boundary for the set i i, I, I don't know but it's just there wait, no wait i got it the ultimate yeah. piece of advice that I learned from Megamind applies to this situation. The number one thing that defines a supervillain? Presentation! So it works in reverse for heroes as well. Okay, that makes sense. Either that or they just got lazy and used like blow up bouncy castle pieces and decided to say fuck it. That that is honestly probably what it was. Jason and Zach are walking through the are walking through the festivities and they come upon Angela and I'm like, oh for fuck's sake, uh, I can't watch this. Come on. For Fred's Zach. fuck's sake. Zach, you deserve better. Hey, why don't we get together tonight and go out? If you were a Power Ranger, I would say yes in a minute. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Basically, uh, Angela says, hey, 
Zach, if you were a Power Ranger, I'd totally get some roll on your bones. Uh, but unfortunately, that's a no go, buddy. And Zach's like <laughs> yeah. getting blue balled and saying, "Come on, Jason, we got to morph. I we need to get some. I need to get some from Angela. I need to get some bitches, <laughs> specifically Angela. <laughs> specifically Angela. Got my money." party with bitches we cut to the other three that are also here but in a different place and we see a bunch of extras and like the the amount of extras they hired for this bit this really does scream season finale to me it is pretty much the season finale but we'll get to that later it, yeah it basically is uh but they include like other characters that have been in the show like uh ernie's there mrs appleby's there for like a quick second i can't like, hi, kids. By the way. Hi, kids. We never did do a career breakdown on Mrs. Appleby's actor. So Royce Heron is the, the actress who portrayed Mrs. Appleby. Royce Heron is an actress who portrayed Mrs. Appleby for 19 episodes of Mighty Morphin. Most of those episodes are in season one. She is in seven episodes of season two and one episode of season three, which means she's in 11 episodes of season one. Other things she's been in is Sweet Valley High. Okay. A TV series from 1996 where she played a German lady. <laughs> a German lady. She was in an episode of Zio, one episode of Zio. Yeah, she was in Zio, yeah. She was in three episodes of Turbo. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, didn't I see her in Turbo? She was in two episodes of the Bernie Mac show. That's random. She was in an episode of ER from 2006. Ooh, I love ER. Who'd she play? She played a character named Sveta in the episode 21 Guns. The most recent acting credit to her name is she was in an episode of Key and Peele. She played a hotel customer in the episode Sexy Vampires. <laughs> Sexy <laughs> vampires, okay. Key and Peele, so you gotta watch them. It's, they're hilarious. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! I, I'm still trying to think, uh, like, I was kind of trying to come up with how the substitute teacher would say my name. But honestly, <laughs> oh, he'd probably just pronounce the silent L. Malcolm. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, Malcolm, like Blake, he said Palaki. Anyway, <laughs> Trini, Kimberly, and Billy are traveling through the crowd and seeing all these extras, and in the background, when they stop, and uh, they're talking about how many people are there, there's just an extra that has a camera, and he's just fa acting like he's taking pictures. Bulk and Skull show up. Speaking of Skull, him and Majin Bulk uh, show up. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm loves Mach and Bulk. I'm just imagining Boo's face, but it's Bulk. I'm imagining Bulk with Boo's face. That's what I meant to say. And if he did, he would eat Skull. Unfortunately, he wouldn't. He would turn Skull into candy and then eat him. No, I was just saying he would just eat him. Candy. He's just like, no, it's like, you don't even deserve being candy. I'm just going to eat you. That's how much I hate you, Skull. Malcolm promoting Vor on the podcast. What mm -hmm. is Vor? Mm -hmm. You got to explain mm -hmm. Vor to me. Dinner! No, no. Oh, we're moving on. No, no, no. what is Vor? You uh, gotta explain that. Uh, put up, put up the right to censor. Warning. Warning. Oh, oh Warning. it's that bad. Okay, okay, never mind. I have several questions. So Bulk and Skull are here at a photo booth. Bulk rips one of the pictures off and says, okay, we can change in here. So let's go. Uh, they both go into the photo booth, which, by the way, no curtain on this photo booth. So it basically just looks like an open box. And they just start stripping naked. <laughs> In, yeah, yeah they like do. all their clothes come off. You see a fucking pair of underwear fly out. <laughs> oh yeah, their underwear fly out. And then who comes out? Two superheroes. In quotations, two. In, quote, super in massive quotation marks. Two and superheroes. They say a little like Green Lantern sort of proverb where they're talking like. We'll protect this city with all our might. Oh, we're here to save this city. I, it rhymes. I don't know the whole thing. So th this is the incredible Bulkster and Super Skull. As soon as she said Bulkster, all I can think of is the incredible Bulk. God, <laughs> the amazing me. Bulk. Yeah, the amazing Bulk. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> See, when I heard Bulkster, I immediately thought, "Dit, dit, 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 dit." I, I don't know at the top of my head how many episodes there have been. But we will see these outfits again. Yeah, yeah. we get them later no. on. And we no get them, way. We get them later on, like, I think once or twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. God, I'm so ready for that. Because let me let me just describe how amazing these outfits are. So, Bulk, dressed up like the Tick. Boom! 
He does look like the tick. His full blue bodysuit with a purple cape. His his suit and his belt have a backwards B on them. His belt is the best part of his costume. His giant his front belt plate is a giant pizza. I it's thought a, it was a, a hubcap. No, it's, it's just a giant pizza. And on his utility belt, he has a burger with onion rings stuck in the top of it. Oh, that's and what a, that is. Okay. And a hot dog with uh, with a stick in it oh, inside a bun. That totally makes sense for why when they come back later with the same costumes. Oh, I get it now. All right. Okay. That's Bulkster. And then Super Skull looks like Robin Hood men in tights if he, looked, if he tried to cosplay Bizarro. I think these are just Skull's pajamas. <laughs> He's got this purple Robin Hood outfit with a legally distinct S symbol. Giant gray cape. A hurricane esque mask and not like Hurricane Shane Helms esque mask. He, yeah, like he a ro makes Robin, Robin mask. look like Etrigan the Demon. And on and on Robin's and sorry, fuck it. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the effort. God damn it! And on Super Skull's belt, he has a donut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> he has a donut. So this, donuts, donuts. <laughs> And also, I forgot to mention that Bulkster is wearing uh, orange sunglasses as his mask. Uh, well, I think those are goggles. Mask. Those are swimming no, goggles. Yeah. They, they, he takes I, them I, off later. They're sunglasses. Oh, okay. Oh, they are? Okay. Because they kind of reminded me with his getup, they kind of reminded me of specifically the Ted Cord Blue Beetle because he had goggles like that as well. Yeah, unfortunately, they're cheap. So that's Bulkster and <laughs> Super Skull. By the way, Super Skull, one letter off from uh, my favorite character to play in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Super Skull's your main? No, no, I'm, I'm not getting sidetracked again. You goddamn yeah. nerd. No. They go up to the stage. By the way, the stage is very lovely. It's a big picture of them using the Power Blaster, as I like to call it, or the Power Bazooka or whatever it's called. The power Blaster. The power blaster. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. like the, just, the the weapon where it combines all their main weapons. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's the, it's them posing with that weapon. They go up to the podium, and <laughs> Bulk taps the microphone and is like, "Hello, fair citizens of Angel Grove. Today is the most momentous day in your lives, as now two superheroes have decided benevolently to move here and protect this city. Those two heroes, of course." <laughs> Being myself, the incredible bulkster, and my sidekick, Super Skull. No one is having any of it. There's two kid actors that are like, show us some of your superpowers. Yeah. Challenge accepted. So your guys' powers are Hulk Hogan superpowers. Well, that does make sense, actually, though. The incredible bulkster. <laughs> they do these poses, these kicks. Also, bulk takes the uh, takes the hot dog out of its bun and extends its antenna. <laughs> yes, Is that a does. euphemism? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he actually takes a hot dog out and antenna really comes out. Oh, I wonder. Yeah, it does. It does. And they keep having problems with their capes. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. Da -da 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 -da. They're finally ready to beam all of Angel Grove into another dimension because that's the plan so that they can easily attack and get rid of the Power Rangers. Why don't they just take and the Rangers to the dimension as well? I believe the actual reason is that the Morphing Grid protects them from this dimensional travel. Right, right. Oh, so the Power Coins. Yes. So on Rita Signal, everyone, first being Bulk and Skull, Bulk and Skull were the first two, which makes everyone in the crowd think they actually had superpowers, which was hilarious to see, followed by <laughs> everyone else in the crowd including angela thank god yeah, yeah, yeah. angela's gone for now <laughs> hey! for now until, until all until the five goody goods are the only ones left in the city this is a everyone small is city if all if an entire city was just there i mean she they could have just zapped everyone that was like at home or at work yeah that too as well oh my god yeah, imagine they're... someone's taking a shit and then they're just like out of existence <laughs> Or having sex, and then blam. No, no, I, I'm just imagining, what if you're halfway through the poop? Like, does <laughs> half of the poop stay, and like... Mother pus bucket. Because it's halfway out that the whole poop stays, but you get beamed to... But here, if you get like beamed halfway, you... halfway pooped, and then you wind up on the other side, and you ever, whoever you, you land on... Who, who, whoever you land on, the poop lands on the person. What the hell? 
hell is wrong with you people? Anyway, cutting back, uh, after everyone has been transported, Jason gets in contact with Zordon and is wondering what's going on. Zordon is like, okay, everyone else was, uh, we just got a transmission from the moon. Everyone's been warped to another dimension, another dimension. Alpha 5, thankfully, is tracing the broadcast, so they'll be able to uh, figure out what dimension they're in and hopefully bring everyone back. He also mentions to Alpha that you need to keep an eye on movement from the moon, and <laughs> Alpha's like, But how can the moon move? Back at Bandora Castle, Rita's talking about, Okay, guys, we're going on a trip. And Squat says, Ooh, should I pack a bathing suit? <laughs> Damn it, Squat. <laughs> you are now imagining Squat in a bathing Suit. Oh God, no! <laughs> we cut to the yeah, Super Sentai uh, footage of the first episode from episode one. Yes, because the moon base comes down on a skyscraper because the moon base has to be close to Cyclopsis for Goldar to control it. Also, I missed something. I was watching these episodes uh, yesterday with Damien, and Damien pointed something out to me. Uh, that Zordon looks like a, a certain Italian dictator. <laughs> he looks like Benito Mussolini. Yes. <laughs> They're the same picture. He so does. I can't unsee it now. God damn it, Damon. Thank you for ruining Zordon for me. He is the devil's son, so he has to ruin stuff for us. It's all for you. <laughs> I was going to correct you to tell you who it was, but I think Adam can agree he is the devil's son. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... If you have to <laughs> think about it. You have the answer. <laughs> yeah, no, the answer is yes. View Ranger episode one footage. Yes, the moon base is on a skyscraper. Rita summons Cyclopsis. Cyclopsis arrives, and yes, it is an evil Gundam. <laughs> it is the first looks ever. Nothing like a Cyclops. <laughs> it kind of does a little, it, little bit look like a Cyclops. It has one eye. It's the headdress. It's specifically like the head bit, the headpiece that looks like a giant eye, but there are two eyes under it, clearly. If you want to get technical, this is probably the third Cyclops we've had in the show. <laughs> there was the Cyclops monster that was before this. And then before that, you could, even though Eye Guy had many eyes, you could count that as a Cyclops. First, Kinda do. This is the first ever Cyclops Zord in their eyes. And also the first General Zord. That's or another a general. thing. Now, I am not well-versed. Obviously, I'm the virgin of Power Rangers, but the term Zord, yes, yeah, could be in logic something that Zordon created. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I could. Yeah, tell. It's, so now it's named he, after him. Yeah, I, I want to say uh, he he created the initial Zords and whatnot. They were named after that, and he created a bunch of other hidden Zords throughout the planet. I learned something in the comics recently that apparently. Lord Zed is oh. the mentor of Zordon. Uh, are we going to count the comics? No, God! He was the mentor of Zordon. Maybe Lord Zed created the Zords, and that explains season three, Andreas. Yeah. <laughs> that, would also, that would also explain why the evil people have Zords, in which case, honestly, that's a fair enough explanation for me. Mm -hmm. Straight into the Zords, straight into the Megazord to defeat Cyclopsis. They do a little stare down. Megazord and Cyclopsis do, I mean. <laughs> I have in my notes, Goldar says, and then again. He clearly says it. <laughs> attack but it sounds like and then and i'm just like no and then so then we get a fight with cyclopsis and the megazord and everything's okay at first the uh, cyclopsis finally starts to take control punches kicks megazord's on the ropes so tommy's like okay i gotta i gotta lock in here i gotta summon the summon the dragon zord and he pulls out the dragon tommy? dagger I did not. Okay, I did say Tommy. I meant Jason. Yeah, no, all good, all good. <laughs> he yeah. didn't do his accent. I'm going to say all of that again in the proper way. Round two. The Megazord and Cyclopsis fight, and after some punches and kicks, the Megazord's on the ropes, and Jason says, Oh, yeah, oh, geez, uh, I need some help here. Uh, I'm going to summon the Dragon Zord. I <laughs> he, hate it yes. so much, but I love You're it welcome. so much. <laughs> he summons the Dragon Zord with the Dragon Dagger. So the Dragon Zord shows up, uh, fights with Cyclopsis and Megazord for a little bit. Things don't necessarily go entirely well. Then the Dragon Zord goes into fighting mode. The Tyrannosaurus fights with him. Does it still doesn't go well. Dragon Zord in fighting mode gets knocked down, and we've learned that Megazord is a bottom. We also now learn that the Dragon Zord is in defeat. What, wait, what? <laughs> because Dragon Zord didn't really fight him, just got knocked onto the ground very easily, like 15 seconds in, and is now getting stomped on by Cyclopsis. What does this say to you? Cyclopsis is in defeat. Wait a minute! 
Wait. Oh, it's like, wait, who's in defeat? Dragon's Dragon Zord? Zord is in defeat. <laughs> okay. Dragon Zord is in defeat. I'm a okay, fucking I idiot. guess all Zords are in a feat then. <laughs> well, I mean, Megazord is a bottom. Anyway, <laughs> there's a bit more fighting, and we get a really cool thing of Cyclopsis' hands extending out and acting sort of like tasers to the Tyrannosaurus and the Dragon Zord in fighting mode, shocking them and making some explosions happen. We get some, things are looking pretty grim, but luckily a friend is always nearby and here comes Titanus. And it's clearly the toy. Yeah, this is the most obvious uh, tell or shot of Titanus where you can just easily tell they could not afford to make their own model. So they just went to the nearest fucking Hasbro aisle. It went to the nearest Toys R Us Toys R Us and got a Titanic. Funny you should mention that. There are at least five other shots in this episode where it looks more like a toy, but we'll get there. Oh yeah. I'm waiting for the shot uh where they forgot to take out where the batteries pop out and the hand comes in to put them back in. Also, like in different seasons, a lot of the staff production always would lose a morpher for some reason, and they would just go to Toys R Us and just buy a morpher and use it on the show. It was convincing enough, actually. It was more convincing than our props. Titanus shoots off the hook hands, and they fly up and out of there. And I thought it was originally an explosive rig, but no, it was just the hands. Uh, we get the Megazord forming, and he, the Ultra Zord, blows up to uh, blows up Titanus. What? What? I'm, Ultra's I'm word blows English. up Cyclopsis. Shut, I'm, I'm fucking English today. Okay. What ain't no country I ever heard of? They speak English and what? Okay, let me try that again. I'm I'm Hulk Hogan, the right gay guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try that one more time. So the Ultra Zord is formed. The Ultra Zord blasts the fuck out of Cyclopsis. Cyclopsis inside uh, Goldar is like, no, not my beautiful Cyclopsis. And then he just turns into fire and instant transmissions out of there again. Just... Then Rita decides to pull a Two-Face from Batman Forever and decides to just say, fuck it. It's like, why can't you just die? Oh, yeah, that is... Harvey Dent. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. This this is the moment. This entire scene here where Titanus goes to is murdered goes to Ohio. Okay, so I'm going to explain this scene in detail. You're not going to believe it's real. And then you're going to find it. Yeah, everyone's going to laugh. Rita blasts Titanus. And then we cut to a shot of Titanus as a toy. And a bunch of craters formed around it. And it gets sunk into the dirt a little bit. Immediately cut to four frames of a photoshopped Titanus on top of a matte painting of a crater in the middle of a city. What the fuck is that? And they just adjust the position of Titanus a few times, once per frame. It's, just, it's the most janky-looking bullshit, and I love it. 1993 Photoshop. 1993 special effects. Yeah. Uh, we cut to Titanus once again sinking into the into the ground, and the Megazord comes over and tries to pull it up by the neck. <laughs> it's like, bro, that's my and neck. I... I I was half expecting Titanus's head to come off here, but no. Rita blasts the Megazord off, and Titanus keeps sinking into the hole. And they keep cutting between shots of it being the toy and being a more convincing puppet with flashing red eyes and moving neck. Then they cut back to the toy, back to the puppet, back to the toy again, and as it fully sinks into the hole, as he finally sinks into the hole, they just superimpose a Michael Bay explosion on top of it. He just dies. Do you think Zords can be choked? Mega Dragon Zord choking the hell out of Titanus for a second. I mean, maybe. I could see it. Anyway, Titanus is dead now. He's in Ohio. Rita is like, okay, nope, you guys are done. It's not just him. You're all going to suffer the same fate because I'm going to bring back the greatest person. Damien's everyone's dad. favorite Satan. Yeah, we're summoning Damien's dad, Lokar. <laughs> and Lokar <laughs> has a very interesting in, in reintroduction. So the spell activates and it's just it starts as two eyes and it looks like the Lita Titan Tron. <laughs> You know, the Lita Titan yeah, yeah. where it's just her eyes in her the eyes. sky. The eyes move back. The dark clouds form into Lokar's head. And I'm like, damn, Lokar actually looks really good in this episode. And for like the half a second that it was the Japanese actor. And then they transitioned to the American actor. And yeah. it looks like the Wish.com version of Satan. It was so weird. I do like the new upgrade look for Lokar with the, the red paint. <laughs> the red paint is a good touch. But it's like you're looking. <laughs> the transition from the Japanese 
'80s actor who looks like really actually menacing and almost a little bit to a uh, homeless guy from Letterkenny. Lokar is back in Pog form. Lokar has returned, and we cut back to the uh, the what the fuck is it called again? Uh, HQ. Command center? Oh, oh, oh. Command center. Command center. He's an HQ. Yeah. No, no, it's the call... command center. Yeah. I was going to I was gonna call it the enrichment center for some reason. <laughs> the enrichment center. <laughs> that makes it sound like the Power Ranger. Mighty Morphin Power Cult. Rita does revive Cyclopsis thanks to the ma magic of Vol of a... Uh, God damn it. Magic. I can't speak today. Magic, magic. of Lokar. Yes. I was going to say magic of Voltar. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Magic of Lokar, yes. So we're back at the command center and we're seeing the reintroduction of uh, Lokar and the revival yeah! of Cyclopsis. And Jason's just like, what are we going to do, Zordon? And Zordon just says, nothing. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the people of Eden Grove. <laughs> no, Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything until the Zords are charged. We can't let you go and fight Lokar and Cyclopsis by yourselves. Basically, at this point, the universe is doomed! Doomed! Will the Rangers make it out of this one alive? We'll find out next. Will Lokar defeat the Zords for good? Will we ever see the return of Willy? No, because he's fucking dead. To be continued! Right now. now, Doomsday Part Two. Okay, so we open up immediately at the command center with Billy and Alpha going over, trying to figure out how to de defeat Cyclopsis and Rita, basically. Oh, and, and Lokar, sorry. Well, they the said it takes 12 hours to charge the Zords to get back in the fight. Yeah, they, they charge like a modern cell phone and they drain battery power like a 3DS. Oh, if you want to hear battery power for uh, Zords, we'll get to that in season three. Oh, crap! I forgot! Oh, yeah! Fuck! Oh, God, I'm already fucking pissed off. I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's something that you really love in uh, Die Ranger. or No, Kaku Ranger. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna love this, man. Yeah. So then Mussolini tells the Rangers that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So Mussolini tells the Rangers that if the Zords aren't fully charged and if they use and if they fail with the emergency backups, the Zords are done for good. Foreshadowing. 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 Cue morphing sequence. It's morbid time. <sighs> I'm moving on quickly from that so I don't get a headache. Cue Zord sequence and they beam immediately back into the Megazord. Cue another Zord fight. Orcar blows the Megazord. Come on. <laughs> yeah, low car becomes a shoop to whoop. Yeah, no, literally, it blows the Megazord. It, it, take that as you will. And it's pretty much quickly screwing them over. And then Jason, of course, calls the Dragon Zord, which at this point, with the amount of times he's been called from the water in in like one or in like one episode, like he's been like three times per episode will come out out of the water sometimes or in Every two time. parters. It, it reminds me of Shenron from Team Four Star. God damn it! What do you guys want now? And I mentioned psychosis when fighting the Megazord. He slices the Megazord arm and then one arm falls off and falls down. Just a flesh wound. Yeah, that had to fucking weird out kids. Like, what the fuck? That could happen? Oh, what traumatized me as a kid is like when the Ninja Zords got destroyed. A little bit of that scene that in, I believe in like in a Watch Mojo top 10. Don't judge me. I watch Watch Mojo. I watch Watch Mojo as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad none of us can speak today. <laughs> So, Lokar smiling pervily at the Zords as they're down. Giggity. <laughs> Giggity. Giggity. The Zords are then legit looks like just straight up destroyed. You forgot to mention that Lokar, uh, that, uh, sorry, what am I saying? No, no. That, uh, that Cyclopsis cut off Dragon Zord's tail, which means he can get a Dragon Zord Great Axe. Oh, I thought Look. that was a Skyrim reference. No, it's a Dark Souls reference, and don't judge me. Damien held me up at gunpoint and said, if you don't put a Dark Souls joke in the podcast, I'm killing you. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Seeing the Zords here, the Megazords, completely, like, destroyed, it looks like. They get Infinity Ward. Yeah, it looks like they're gone. Like, they're, like, Weirdly enough, like sections disappeared. Mr. Zordon, I don't feel so good. This is no place to die. 
Rangers beam back to uh, the Power Rangers play castle. <laughs> yeah, they, they all jump out of the vehicle because they didn't want to get Infinity Ward. And then they they go. I, I want to say they uh, they like walk back to the command center because because with the Zords gone, the communicators are like interfered or whatever, right? They don't go back to the command center at this point because they have to go and do their side quest. Yeah, they go to Billy's garage. But it's here that we get the exposition as to what really happened to the Zords. See, if they lose in battle, they automatically disassemble and return to the secret hiding place to re-energize. <sighs> kids shows, man. I get that you're a kids show, but fuck me, have some stakes. This is the self-defense mechanism of the Megazord. So traumatizing your kids is just a defense protocol. <laughs> Bro, this yeah. is like the Disney era of 1993. You watch Great Mouse Detective, Beauty and the Beast. Those were from. messed up cartoons. We're built different. Kids these days are watching Skibbity Toilet and we were watching actual murder. Your mother can't be with you anymore. Bible American Tale. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. We're, oh we're used god. to this stuff. Like, traumatize all of us as all we want. We went through a lot of shit. And let's not forget the uh, the, the generation that was uh, that grew up on Totally Spies. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging my generation. My generation, too. <laughs> well, actually, no, I was more of a Martin Mysteries kid. So. Good choice. No, I'm uh, joking. Yes, I fucking love that show. So, uh, as it turns out, this is the self-defense mechanism. So now they're emergency, like, stasis place where they're emergency, like, getting repaired and uh, their batteries basically being restored. They got to charge the batteries. They plugged in the Megazord to their, uh, to fucking Billy's garage. Plugged it into Billy's cigarette lighter. And Billy goes like, hey, I need to go to my garage so we can I can fix the frequency on the communicator to get to the command center and yep. in this case i firmly believe this is the very first time we get the american version of goldar like that isn't just like stock footage we had him before like in the in the g g g god damn it <laughs> green was evil where he fights jason right i did forget yeah, about that spaceship yeah okay then i want to say this is the first time outside of bandora castle that isn't like a main conflict fight yeah. he shows up at billy's house with two putties and he's just living his best life he's like oh power rangers it looks like your few minutes are up excuse you i believe it's oh you power rangers your minutes are up <laughs> and he just keeps laughing and he's living his best life and i'm like fuck i want to be goldar in this moment and only in this moment but unfortunately you can't because i am goldar and then goldar goes fuck this desk in particular and throws shit off the desk for no reason <laughs> 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 meanwhile at the command center <laughs> alpha has managed to decipher some information that he they can use be sure uh. to drink your oval team. Son of a God, I wish you were that fun. Okay, so they found Rita's data bank. Excuse me? A baking powder? Rita. Rita has a data. Rita has a server. Evil gothic space witch that has medieval monster themes has a PC with files on it about monsters. Yes! Does it? Where what? the fuck does she get the electricity from to plug in this server? Does she have? Maybe she had a backup Cardiotron. Does she have a socket in her palace? How? I need to know this plug... shit. Does she just Wait. unplug the fucking monster Matic and plug in her fucking Mac 10 computer? <laughs> Do you think Rita uses Windows Vista? Uh... Why does it just it? No, it, 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 it's Macintosh 1. Why, why? It just boggles my mind. It gives me a migraine when you have this really cool gothic, like medieval style space witch. And then she has a fucking IBM computer. Really slow ass computer. She just has a like, it's just like, oh, I'm just imagining she's like in her main room with Does like she? the planetarium and her telescope and stuff. And then she just walks over to her bedroom and it just has a fucking Commodore 64 in there with a stack oh. of floppy disk labeled monster files. All I can think now is her having a computer. Does she do her taxes? How, do, how does that <laughs> do? Do you think an evil is Rita do both taxes? <laughs> her staff's a tax write off the more she uses it. She does have to get money back from the uh, s secret society of evil later on. Down She's a criminal who gives a shit. Oh, wait, no. 
know, hold on. I guess there is a certain bureaucracy oh, to yeah. the uh, ranger villain. Yeah, because uh, Lord Zed is the, what is he, the commander? and uh, Yeah, there's like Empress, Emperor, Emperor of Emperor. Evil, then there's Ma- Malagor. Malagor, and then there's... Oh, Dark Spectre. Dark Spectre, he was the supreme leader of it all. I am Dark Spectre, monarch of all the universe that shall belong to the dark spectre he was basically the big bad of power rangers yeah, during one, that time he was the one that was telling them all what to do he was the supreme leader basically just a reuse of the suit from turbo power rangers movie but hey it does work though he looks threatening yeah so anyway billy fixes his communicate their communicators and he gets to teleport back to the command center before i have a migraine <laughs> <laughs> wait one more thing why did they have to fix the communicators to if the they fix- had the rad bug oh yeah the rad bug wasn't there it wasn't in the garage but, but it was billy's garage but the, it, it wasn't, wasn't there. there. It got it got warped it, away to the other dimension. It got warped. He got warped away to the other dimension. Oh, well, he got towed because uh, he had several parking tickets. Maybe, Maybe Willie finally him. escaped and he's just fled the country, and that's why the rad bug has gone. He changed his name. No, I think it is there. No! They get teleported back to the command center now that their communicators are fixed, and we immediately transition into another thing that gives me a massive migraine. Wait, sorry, hold on. They go, they teleport back, and Goldar is all mad. It's like, no! no! He doesn't decide to, like, wreck Billy's garage, because, you know, he's evil and all. He just leaves. He just leaves. It's the 60s so, way of doing things. You just fight, and then when you're done fighting, you leave. Immediately, they learn about Rita's data center and <laughs> all of the good data they pulled off of it. And we also learn that the Zords are fully charged and ready to go. That was a fast 12 hours. It has been one hour top since they were Infinity Ward. And you're telling me they're fully charged now. I'm gonna fucking shit. Maybe it's like in Buffy that w- when they're in like teleported or whatever, they're sent to another dimension and time works differently there. So you're telling me the Zords got sent to the hyperbolic time chamber? To the void. So uh, yes, Zordon so. says that in order to defeat Cyclopsis, you got to change battle modes as much as you can in order to confuse the goddamn robot. What? <laughs> He's trying to muddle and confuse you. Driving the 90s me. writing is really starting to get to me now. I, I, I can enjoy the filler to a certain degree, but I feel like it's I, I feel like I'm starting to reach my breaking point with the the dumb like stories let's wait till season two and the baby shows up uh, no no jacob no more cookies no, no. <laughs> the what the what you know the baby the runaway baby oh yeah don't spoil it i for love adam. that scene don't fuck you don't spoil it for adam he, i want to see him shit himself when you see you're that. the one that brought it up yeah we'll get to that and, when it comes uh, along. we will i don't know how far it is but i i'm gonna put that on uh, my notes because i have a lot to talk about with that scene two zones sequence <laughs> Again. Yep. Again. And oh my god. Poor fucking Dragon Sword. Again. <laughs> again. He, he, <laughs> every time he comes up, he's like, I gotta say hi to Dave again. This is like the fourth or third time like this uh, for, for this two-parter. So I just imagine this time as soon as his head comes out of the water, he's just like <laughs> <laughs> He's just letting out a scream of pure frustration. You have your first day off after five days working straight, but then that one asshole at work decides to call in sick, and you gotta come in on your day off. That level of fuck. Oh my god, form Dragon Zord in fucking fighting mode, and then cue a pretty good fight scene, honestly. I love any time they pull out the drill with Dragon Zord in fighting mode. It's just because it's... It, Honestly, it's a really cool and kind of unique weapon for the Zords because you don't see a lot of drills it just as reminds weapons me as separate. It just reminds me of every single time that the fucking the drill is used to actually murder someone and it has like a crunchy, gory sound. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> they don't do that anymore because they go like, we got to stop doing that. That's way too violent. But it's I mean, cool, damn it. Do the Ultra Zord and a big thumbs up from the Rangers that they're ready to end this fight. At the same time, get a shot of Lokar here in this part. He's just like in the camera with his fuck me eyes. <laughs> 
raising his eyebrows and he's licking his lips. He's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> also, he's also voiced by Robert Axelrod again. Not he's as obviously. noticeable, in my opinion, this time. Like, not as cool as the last time. Because I think he has, like, he has, like, one line. He doesn't do the laugh. He right. has, like, one line mm-hmm. where he says... When he says that, he sounds like Captain Knuckle from Flapjack. I'll fight you, well. After Cyclopsis is defeated, we get something I also want to comment on. Rita uh, sends Bandora Castle back, takes the fucking skyscraper with her. She wanted it. Those people are dead. <laughs> as soon as it gets, does, it, it, keep it, I, like, I, does yeah. the skyscraper stay now? Like, I'll be honest, I don't remember past this episode if she keeps the skyscraper. No, it's still Bandora Castle. Somewhere along the line in the space, it's floating. Some Somewhere. People dead. No, people aren't dead. She remember they beamed everyone out of Angel oh, Grove. Oh, right, right. When they all come back, they're just reapparated in midair, and they all just fall to their deaths. <laughs> oh, even worse. <laughs> Thankfully, free from the cornfield. No, it's almost like that theory with the with the, the blip or the snap from from Avengers. Like, if you were on a cruise line at a specific point in time, you're just gonna fall into the fucking ocean. Yeah. 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 You are. Yeah. Unfortunately, Hopefully, this also, is a '90s show or '90s kids show. They didn't think that deep. But so, three uh, assholes 30 years later are deep analyzing yeah, are this gonna, shit. <laughs> yeah, are going to say, fuck your logic. Also, when they uh, when they leave uh, Earth, Raid is pissed off that her plan didn't work. Squat says, it's my fault. I was asleep. <laughs> it was my fault. I was asleep. It was Squat, not Babu. It was just, I, I can't do Bab. I can't do yeah, Squat. He sounds, like, he sounds like Master Roshi. After they leave, everyone comes back from the other dimension. So everyone comes back from the other dimension, including Angela, Boo. Boo, you suck. Boo. Vulcan Skull. Last, la- last people to come back, Bulkster and Super Skull. Yay. And they're so ecstatic about coming back. They're like, we're back. And then they go and kiss the ground. Skull accidentally moved his cape in the way. So he goes, kisses the ground, realizes it's his cape, and says, oh, that's my cape, throws it out of the way, and kisses the ground. Then the mayor Carrington comes out and kicks him out. Get out of here! Ooh, new character. Yes, she shows yeah. up. I think the last time we see her is in Zio. Yeah, she shows up a couple times. But the weird thing is we never know who she's portrayed by. I found on Ranger Wiki, the trivia was that Mayor Carrington was portrayed by no one. Or they was portrayed by an unidentified actress. It says Christina Miles. Is that the one from like Zio? Or? It says Mayor Carrington portrayed by Christina Miles. First scene, Doomsday Part 1. Last scene, Honey, I Shrunk the Rangers Part 1. Oh, that's terrible. Hmm. So Mayor Carrington comes into the and says, Yo, uh, Bulkster and Skull, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she kicks them off the stage, and then the Power Rangers are suddenly there. Uh, and everyone's like, look, it's the Power Rangers. The mayor says, make way for the Power Rangers. Power Rangers start walking through the crowd, shaking hands, giving thumbs ups. And we get we cut to those kid actors from before. Like, blonde one says, oh, the Red Ranger is the best. Then the other white kid says, no, the Black Ranger is the best. He's the coolest. And then the black kid says, no, the Blue Ranger is the best. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that that is one uncool kid. If he says Billy's, well, actually, no, he's hey, on something. Billy is actually awesome. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I I tease just because everyone calls Billy a nerd. But if we're being honest, Billy's probably the biggest beefcake in the entirety of this show. He's the biggest hunk. As these kids are arguing about which ranger is the best, two people come up. One of them is Trini's cousin Sylvia, last seen in the clown episode. And you're gonna say last seen in Skull's basement. I think this would be her last episode because she will be wind up in Skull's basement after this. This is her last episode. And she says, oh, the Yellow Ranger is actually the best, or maybe the pink one. But who's that with her? It's everyone's favorite ranger, Jason David Frank. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. They're all totally awesome. Wearing all green. With a green denim jacket. What the fuck is that? Mayor Carrington, she was Gloria on Scrubs. Except Gloria, what is her deal? I'm here. And for God's sakes, will somebody wake up Gloria? When we were watching this, I I got really happy when he came on. I can't have a bad fucking day when goddamn Jason David Frank's on my TV. Then we don't see him back until return of an old friend. And uh, Jason comes up and gives him a handshake, says, you're going to take this suit later. (laughs) (laughs) No, you're going to take my leadership. 
later. You're gonna take my red card. I'm getting too old for this shit. Go up to the the stage and uh, there's some you know talk about how they're the greatest heroes Angel Grove has ever seen. Blah 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 blah. And they do the '90s freeze frame jump. Which they've used like five times so far. I do like since this is almost like the the halfway point for the first season and. This is the two thirds point. We're episode forty out of sixty. Oh wow! We're I didn't even check the episode name. God damn. Okay, cool. Oh, I really like the fact that like this was such a big battle for the Rangers. Zordon recognizes that, and he like he says, "You fought as best as you could. You don't have to keep up the fight." You may now choose whether you wish to remain Power Rangers or return to your regular lives. Like these are teenagers. He he straight up knows he chose teenagers to uh, fucking fight a galactic war. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, if you guys don't want to keep doing this, honestly, I won't blame you. No, they, it really shows that these were the right teenagers for the fucking job because they're like, uh, no. Yeah, they're like, no, we love this. Yeah, Rita's still out there. Evil still needs to be fought. Zack says, I need, still need to get in Angela's pants. <laughs> and Trina comes up with a line. To the end. You know, oh, what, no. you, you know what I mean, Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah, that, hit, that line hits harder now that she says that, like, to the very end. Oh, crap. See you in season two, episode 20. <laughs> oh, Rangers. So I, I got to say, this definitely does feel almost like they could have ended the full season here. I'm getting to that in a bit. They decide they want to be Power Rangers for, for as long as they want. It, for most of them is uh, about 40 episodes from now. And <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So Doomsday Part 2 is officially the last we see of the full Jew Ranger footage. Because Doomsday Part 2 was supposed to be the last episode for the Power Rangers, but they go like, huh, we could do some more because this show is a banger. The kids love it. He gave us a week for Christmas after the end of the first year. Just a week for Christmas after the- That was it. That's when I figured out we were famous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to the mall. That was a mistake. Yeah, it was the, it was the, it was the marker for me. It was like TV guy, like uh, Disney's Adventures. It was like, that's me. Yo, that's- we're on, a, we're on a TV guide. Y'all even That's know what that crazy. is? They Don't had no it. idea that this show was going to become their flagship show for yeah. Fox Kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had no clue. They, so, they had Animaniacs and, like, Batman. They thought those were going to be those, like, their top shows for the longest time. To be fair, when you can beat Animaniacs, you impress me a little bit. Like, if you think about it, Power Rangers lasted outlasted every single kids show that was ever on Fox Kids. That is so true. That is true. So and even technically, it's still going on in some way, shape, or form. Like, we'll, we will see the return of it in show form. For yeah. sure. So this is the end of the original Zhu Ranger footage. How are they going to make more episodes, Andreas? So this was the last episode on November 30th, 1993. And they came back with episode 41 on February 7th, 1994. Three months later. How did they do this? Saban contacted Towie, or Toei. How do you say Toei. it? Toei. 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 To uh, requisition more Zoo Ranger footage. But here's here's the problem. Toei was doing Die Ranger at the time. So Saban said like, hey, can we get you to record new footage for Zoo Ranger just for us? And we can like let you know what plans we have for a storyline so you can like fit your actors into what we're doing when they're in costume toy goes we'll like pay yeah you money we'll pay you money and like being knowing that saban's is so cheap the way we were working 12 to, to 18 hour days and no overtime no extra pay no golden time i was making about 622 dollars and 11 cents every two weeks filming three episodes for the biggest television show in the world they were so cheap i'm surprised he did this because like for the life of me i tried looking up online how much toei charged him for Jew ranger 2 footage but i couldn't find anything and uh, maybe just saban doesn't want us to know so the next episode will be all Jew 2 footage which uh is only coined by power ranger fans is not coined by saban it's only fan <laughs> fans that coined it Jew 2 it's, footage. A, it's, a, it's a fan term yeah see is it Jew 2 or is it z2 because i heard z2 or z2 i think they're well. in 
I think they're interchangeable. What are the difference between Zoo 2 and original Zoo Ranger, Zoo Ranger you may ask? Well, the music. The music and technology. More uh, green and pink ranger together because you never see the green and pink ranger together in Zoo 1 footage. So the relationship between the green and pink ranger is shown more. In Zoo 2, Billy's technical mastery is more shown. In the Zoo Ranger footage, the blue Sentai is more of a goofball and not smart. But in Zoo 2, they make him yeah, more Yeah, he's kind of dumb. So the blue ranger has more technological advances because he invents a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it definitely it seems like one of the only, if not the only time that the the Super Sentai creators worked on Power Rangers, like yeah. had involvement in it. And it's it's definitely unique, like ha having like Japanese footage for the American show. We it's just that has never been done since. And in my opinion, I wish we had more of that. It would have made Power Rangers more special instead of just being another adaptation of the Sentai, like later mm -hmm. seasons are, like Time Force, Time Force, Wild Force, or because we still get like them doing their own thing but we, we still it's them working around the footage and the last thing about the Jew 2 footage is the technical quality the pacing of the fights between the zords and monsters like in the Jew 1 battles were like lively and very fast and the Jew 2 footage is like more slower and more deliberate they take their time uh, so we went from uh, Will Ospreay work rate to a Randy Orton work rate Something like I thought that. you were going to say Will Ospreay New Japan to Will Ospreay AEW yeah, I could have totally <laughs> done that and pissed people <laughs> So speaking of Jew 2 footage, episode 41, read a seed of evil. It was aired February 7th, 94, and was written by Stuart, Stuart St. John and directed by Robert Hughes. Yay, we got Robert did, Hughes again. Did they just, Robert Hughes and Terrence H. Wingless are just playing director ping pong at this yeah. point. <laughs> Probably the most reliable directors on the show, honestly probably why they direct so many fucking episodes all right so we cut to angel grove high school and we see the gang with mr kaplan in the science room i believe or the bot but not but not fuck the plant room but botany 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 class because they're growing plants to save the environment it's not an, not again but it's not far <laughs> it's not shoved in this much this time they just make mention of it but not like you know why i dread club. this but it's not as bad as cleanup club because they mentioned yeah, a little bit of it yeah. No, it isn't as bad as Cleanup Club. So Mr. Kaplan said, like, yeah, whoever goes to plant will mm -hmm. go forward to saving the planet, but bullshit, blah, I don't care. Vulcan Skull walk yeah. in saying, like, hey, we beat you guys to it. We already grew our plants. We bring out these giant-ass plants. Kimberly goes over yeah. and goes, looks at the tags like, 100% pure baby plastic tree, 1995. They're made out of plastic, yeah. yeah. And Bulk looks at Skull's like, I thought I told you to take the goddamn tag off. Oh, fucking Skull. They argue while the extra in the background is painting, which unfortunately is not as entertaining as an Asian guy painting and yelling at the canvas. Ah! <laughs> yeah. So Bulk is like chasing Skull and Skull's dodging and weaving and pulls the guy painting and the paint goes all over Bulk and he's all he's full of paint right now. And it looks like Shamrock Shake. Did you watch what you're doing? Sorry, I'm still laughing at the Asian guy fucking yelling at the paint. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut to Bandora Castle for the first time ever we see the Jew 2 footage at play and with the Jew 2 footage we get Rita Repulse actually speaking the lines that were written for her. Yeah, she's like dubbing English voice. So you wanna raise some trees, yeah? Yeah, cause Masiko, I forgot, I can't, I, for the life of me, I can't Masahiko see Masahiko Soga. I says the words in Japanese and Barbara Goodson does the words in English. Something I never mentioned before, but I didn't realize until actually watching these episodes with you guys for the podcast about Rita. I thought that was just a hat. That's her hair. That's her hair. I, I legit, I was thinking, that is such a stupid hat. And then I took a closer look at it. Like, I, I just kept staring at her more. Maybe it was because I had a shitty VHS copy of it all my years, and I just, it looked like a hat. Bro, but, I thought it was her hat, too, like, until years later I found out. Uh, just yeah. last year I found out it was her hair. I also, I'm going to be honest, as the new guy, I also thought it was her hat for a good while. And then I remember Andreas. It wasn't this past pay-per-view, but the, one of the pay-per-views I was with you with, you were just like, that's not her hat, that's her hair. <laughs> yeah, because I found out like a year or two ago. 
I forgot who sh mentioned it. Man, it's so strange. strange. That means that Rita's a silver fox. So, Rita's plan, bring out the tentacle monster, plant monster, to Earth. The Ooh. octo plant. The octo plant, which rises from Ohio. Ohio is the, is always what it is. Yes. <laughs> I'm just imagining a sign that it says Ohio and then an arrow that points straight down. We cut to the gang in the park about to uh, put the plants in the ground, because why not? So they're digging shit in and... Putting stuff down. Why are they planting the pots as well, by the way? The pots? <laughs> yeah, that they do plant the pots as well. <laughs> well I did not notice that. What? <laughs> Actually, yeah, wait. No, hold on. Uh, I'm going back at it just to look. Kimberly does take the plant out of the pot. Okay. But I'm right. pretty sure okay. there's at least one person who leaves the pot in. Probably Zach. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> Zach, you're an asshole. <laughs> this entire thing is a fucking, uh, fucking musical montage, and it's shit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was about to say that. Do the first music montage, which this music montage is not good, but the other music montage later on are absolutely bangers. Later on, we're going to have to go Green Ranger, go. Or the, the song Fight. We will come running to your life. We will protect you. Fight. Fight. Which are absolute bangers. This was the first musical interlude that they put in, which is shit. Yeah, okay. like the insert songs. Yeah, because they come to fight scenes later on, they put on the fight music, and it's just so good. And whenever Green Ranger fights, he gets his own theme song, Go Green Ranger, Go. Mm. Have we gotten that yet? No, he hasn't shown up yet. With the so, Green Ranger's first run. No, no. Yeah, no. No, we haven't had that. I like, just blanked on that then. Yeah. So we see Bulk and Skull. Oh, pop out of the bush and goes like, hey, we might as well take their plants and say they're ours. Why not? Let's do that. So they're in a bush and they look like they're surrounded by pot leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Squatch shows up out of nowhere. As soon as the rangers pass him, he shows up. And I was about up. to defeat Rita and the Megazord, but then I got high. <laughs> 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 no wonder they are surrounded by weed because they bump into squat and they must think they're high as fuck. <laughs> yeah, because they back up. Both both Bulk and Skull and Squat were backing up against each other and bump into each other. They both turn around and they both scream. <laughs> squat screams. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Squ I think it's Bulk screamed first, and then Squat wanted to be involved, so he screamed too. And Bulk and Skull run away and hide in the porto potty. Oh god, it was stinking there. Yeah, probably. At this point, Squat starts planting the seeds of evil, and uh, he said, You should probably give me that glow-in-the-dark toothpaste I've been wanting! Teeth are already horrible to begin with. Glow-in-the-dark toothpaste. So the gang sees Squat doing stuff that is sus, and they go like, We gotta stop him. All of a sudden, the putty show up out of nowhere, and they start having a fight mm -hmm. scene billy Girl, fights with a bucket yeah what did i say about billy last time leveling up he's leveled down again but he's still kind of leveled up <laughs> how dare you billy's bucket fighting skills are hilarious yeah i know i'm just saying he kind of leveled down a bit but he still does amazing moves with the bucket it kind of makes you think if they got the uh, production order right for the YouTube episodes. They did. Oh, they actually did? Yeah, because this is right after yeah. Doomsday. Then it's just stupid mm -hmm. continuity issues. Then. Yes. Exactly. Correct. Yes, correct. So Billy and Zach do an amazing backflip together. <laughs> and then exactly. they start doing tag team moves. And then Trini and Kim decide, hey, let's tag together and do some amazing Lucha Libre style stuff. <laughs> Buddies go away and they they like huh that's weird they go to command center get told what's happening jason looks just depressed the entire time damn it they left the oven on at home again no <laughs> jason says like uh i'll go and see what's going on with that force field on the ground the electricity the electricity <laughs> so jason goes to the park and he sees the electricity on the ground and he goes i'm gonna touch it Oh my god, it looks like it could destroy the entire planet. I'm gonna touch it. Meanwhile, the tentacle porn monster is slowly rising from Ohio, sneaking up on Jason. My god, it's, it's, it's the living embodiment of Hentai Haven. It's finally it's escaped. Called, it's prison. It's called Hentai, and it's art. <laughs> oh my god. So Jason is communicating with Zornon. Something's weird going on, and then the tentacle porn grabs him, and it's the most hilarious shot. Because one shot, <laughs> we have him looking down. The thing grabs his legs, and then the next shot, we see Jason's upper body, and he's like, Ugh, I can't get this off, uh, uh. 
<laughs> he calls it overgrown asparagus. And he does like a ballet twirl to get out of it. Twirling towards freedom. It's yeah, twirling, twirl twirling towards freedom. freedom. Twirling, twirling towards freedom. So Jason morphs, he fights by himself. Scorpina shows up. Mm -hmm. And why did I write down Scorpina returns and touches the tip? Because Goldar is there with her and they touch dicks, which is their swords. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going to touch. Oh. Uh... So they get rid of uh, the putties, and they then they go on a digging adventure for the plant. And Rita goes like, "No, fuck you!" I don't know why, but in the notes here, I put in my first response to uh, Ju Two. I just put Ju Two is so weird. So there's a lot more putty fights. It goes on for quite a while. Then they transfer from the park to the mountains out of nowhere, and they just keep cutting to this giant pulsating mass under the ground. <laughs> And then finally, the octoplant has enough energy, and we cut to the most cursed image that I have seen from this show yet. It's just the head of the actual octoplant is at the tip of the bulb, and yeah, it's and fucked up. I bring you love. It's bringing love. Don't let it get away. Break its leg. The octoplant finally blooms, and it's anthro. It's an anthropomorphic plant. So the first ever Jew 2 monster. The Octo Plant, who, by the way, is voiced by Brianne Brosey, who oh, we have talked about before. Yeah. We talked about her before, so I won't do a career breakdown. But I do want to bring up everything she's voiced in, in specifically Mighty Morphin. Did this for other seasons. I didn't do it for Mighty Morphin. Here's everything she's played in every season of uh, Mighty Morphin. Just do season one for now. So in season one, she has played the following characters. Her first appearance was in season one, episode eight, I, I, Guy where she played everyone's favorite skull victim, Willie. Hey, then, hey, Willie. And then in the rock star, she played everyone's favorite weird cousin, Jeremy. The voice of Jeremy and Willie, obviously. Yeah, the and then Jeremy. here she's the voice of the octoplant. And her only other appearance in season one is in episode 55, where she voices the Sockadillo. Oh, yeah, the Sockadillo. Yeah, I remember him. You had some of these names. Also, throughout all this fighting and the actual plot happening, we always also occasionally cut back to Bulk and Skull trapped in the uh, trapped in the portage on. Skull eventually says, I really have to go. And Bulk's just like, Get let me out of here. And at this point, I'm just imagining Bulk and Skull getting the Pooh Cocktail Supreme. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh God! So I feel like the regular poo cocktail would be worse. Because, well, no, actually, that no, it's not bungee. Any poo cocktail yeah. is bad. So <laughs> you know what, Andreas? Cream. That's actually the first thing I can one hundred percent agree on you with. Yes. Every poo cocktail is disgusting. Yes. Every poo cocktail is disgusting. The poo cocktail supreme just adds a risk of death to that list. Uh, dysentery. It literally does. Octoplant gets born. And immediately, Rita makes it grow. And we get a line by Trini saying, The Tower Flower! Huh? <laughs> what? So they huh? call upon the Zords, and we get different music for the Zord. I fucking hate this music. Same. <laughs> it's so much worse than the awesome, badass guitar riff that Ron Wasserman made for the original show. The original two thirds. It's like, if this is what we're doing now, like, it, it's they're, just. They're working they're around. Make... They're. It's gonna make me sad. Yeah, they're trying to figure out what works and what isn't, like, just like the first episode. And they had the perfect, it was perfect. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they get better music later on. Cue Zord sequence. And Megazord mm -hmm. gets made. Jason goes like, It's coming right for us! And Billy goes like, Huh, oh, we gotta be careful. She's made out of vegetable matter. I mean, she is a plant. You, it's, it's a plant. You have a sword. <laughs> Aren't plants flammable? Burn the fucker. I know, right? Does one of the Zords have a flamethrower? Is no. that Later on, season two, Splendor Zord's sword goes on fire. You have a sword. Use it. And then they use it. Jason calls upon the Mega Sword. Uh, change it. The Mega Sword. They changed the name. The Power Sword was fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Change it back. Change it back. So, so far, the only enjoyable thing of the Z2 footage is literally the actual footage of Rita, and that's it. And, and that's only because it matches the dialogue. The Octoplant goes towards the Megazord, and the Megazord dodges, and the Octoplant goes into a building. Not goes in, stops in front of a building. Look behind you! Look at herself. Fuck me. <laughs> I'd fuck me. Monster was My so horse. And, uh, I can't believe we started and ended the episode on that. Jason goes, the bitch is down, the bitch is down, let's kill her already. <laughs> the bitch is down. 
<laughs> so could you imagine? That's totally something Jason would say. The bitch is down. <laughs> bitch is down. So they light up the power sword and kill her. Well, when she's looking kill. at herself, like, come on, man, that's kind of a shitty way to go. He was not even looking at you. You just did it be when she was it. What? Come on. What the fuck? That's Heel not, turn. That's not an audible way. Why Austin St. John? Why? Oh, wait, that's the arrest later. Never mind. <laughs> Going to jail! We cut back to Bulk and Skull, still in the porta potty. We hear vibrations and movement eventually. They're like, what's happening? And then you, they cut to them being on the back of a truck, being driven away. They're going to be taken care of by top men. <laughs> That was my yeah. best attempt at the fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark music. I am a jukebox. We cut back to high school and Mr. Collins looks saying, good job, Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> I know you now. <laughs> like, I know who you are. Good job, kids. Your plants did a great job for the environment. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And Trina goes like, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit about more environment. Bulk and Skull come in, all filled with trash. Hey. And covered in shit. Yeah. They got the poo cocktail. They go like, what about us? What do we get? And like, apparently Mr. Kaplan can't smell them, but everybody else can. It's like, why are you guys late? We got taken before taken. <laughs> By Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Kaplan's not having it or just shitting, goes towards them and goes like, what the fuck is that smell? And he like passes out. <laughs> It falls on the floor and, and supposedly it, breaks his head. Oh, and this bit. I'm sorry. You know, he he falls backwards. And then when they cut back, if you look very closely at the bottom left corner of the screen, you can see the elementary school gym mat that he is falling back onto. Blue school gym mats. That's what he's yeah. falling, oh, falling yeah. back onto. Yeah. I used to, when I was a kid, I used to prop those up and make like a maze out of them. I'd pick a few friends of mine and then we'd get a ball, go inside the maze, and then play tag with it. You need to find yourself a girl, man. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I just remember what I'd use those mats for. And legitimately, one of the most fun games we ever played was that. Because you never know who had the fucking ball. You and me, get a girlfriend. And who would hit you in the fucking face with it next? Yeah. Supposedly, Mr. Kaplan having brain damage on the floor. Vulcan Skull look at him. They smell themselves and they go like, there's nothing wrong with us. We smell like it's the same. Supposedly, Mr. Kaplan is dying on the floor with brain damage. <laughs> this is the only episode that I have seen Mr. Kaplan in thus far where he does not lose his toupee. And like the kids it's are crazy. laughing at Mr. Kaplan being down with brain damage. That's well, dark. Fell into a school gym mat. It's fine. I know, but I'm I saying like, anything, on the show, this is, it's this like is them coping for for wrongfully getting detention. Like yeah. we know it's a it's a mat. We're just saying in the show he fell on the floor at first. He's a stunt granny. He's stuck <laughs> cranny. So, those were episodes. <laughs> I love it when I break you with uh, the stupidest shit. So, those are episode 39 of 41. Final thoughts? I fucking love you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go first on the final thoughts. This is a very fun batch of episodes. Doomsday as a whole is very fun. There's so much to talk about in part one. There's just so much dumb shit going on. This batch of episodes has confirmed to me that my favorite things about doing this podcast is seeing the dumb shit that the create that the writers and the directors come up with to mm -hmm. fill the scene all of the fun extras that they the stuff that they can do with extras and the stuff that they get babu and squat to say when they're clearly not a part of the episode as as much it's just like like holy shit there's the layers in this show are great and a, as an actual like episode of television doomsday is very good at both parts of it honestly it does a good job of finishing this chapter of the ranger story uh we get the, the tommy cameo so the kids can actually decide to eat dinner tonight and go to school it's a very good two-parter and honestly th this would have been a really good season finale if we if it was that but the Jew two footed read a seat of evil this episode was fun on the scale of fillers in this series. It's definitely on the more fun half of filler, which is crazy. It's just cleanup crew, but they don't fucking force the message. Yeah, exactly. This is what cleanup crew should have been. It's like the difference between Avatar and Captain Planet. Exactly. My thoughts on Jutu. There's a lot of 
fun positivity you can have with making Toei do your own stuff. You can have a lot more expressiveness with Rita. You can have characters that weren't going to interact before interact now, like we have in this episode, Squat interacting with Bulk and Skull, which we've never even conceived of at this point. That's what I do like about the Zhu 2 footage is it's going to give a lot of new scenarios that I'm going to be interested in seeing how they push. What I don't like about Zhu 2, the music, it's just, it's oh, not as good. I'm sorry. Better. They get better music. Yeah, yeah, I hope. It's just, it's not as good as Ron Wasserman's music. I hope they either get Ron Wasserman's music back or they come up with better new, with new better stuff. I, uh, I will say he will be back because he does stay for all the way to space, I'd say. So the music is definitely a marked step down at this point. The robot fight, you could definitely tell it was slower. It definitely felt a bit more methodical, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to robot fighting. It doesn't need to be like really fast paced. It, 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 the two giant hulking robots or a robot and a monster, they, they don't need to be doing ballet or lucha. They can just, you know, normal fist fight. It's like you're not going to make Andre the Giant and Big Daddy do fucking 450 splashes or Phoenix splashes unless you're that kind of fucker. But overall, this is a really good set of episodes. Definitely one you should go back and rewatch if you want to. Oh, yeah. Again, I as I said, the story, the writing itself is what bugs me. Mainly because I'm I'm a big writing guy. I I love uh, seeing the structure for stories and stuff. Like very, I'm I'm, I'm a plot guy above all else. So 90s writing, man, it's getting to me a bit. But I'm at, at least it's still dumb, stupid, goofy fun. Because that that's what I enjoy more than everything is the goofy fun. Great to see Lokar again. Fucking awesome. And the first appearance of an evil Zord won't be the last, even for the Zordon era of the show, that we get these proto-Zords, I'll call them, where they're like, they can't form up with other Megazords, and they can't even transform, really. But giant robot technicality sort of thing i know zeltrax has one as well i forgot which season it is where they start doing i think it's dino thunder where they start doing evil megazords I can't remember. yeah well or was it no Ninja wild Storm? force had one wild force yeah yeah i gotta say great batch of episodes great fucking time watching them i even honestly i don't hate the music as much as you guys do but it's still not Ron Wasserman. So my final thoughts on this. Doomsday part one and part two. Y'all talking about the 90s writings. Like I'm so used to this because it's 90s cheese. I grew up with it. But yeah, it's kind of cringy at certain points. Hulk and Skull is wanting to be superheroes. Kind of a change <laughs> in their character arc. To show that they actually want to be superheroes. That's kind of a character arc change right there. They don't want to be complete assholes. They actually do want to help people. But in their own kind of way. It definitely shows they're not evil. They're just kids. Yeah, they're just kids. Yeah, I mean, the bullies, they're kids. So the superhero thing, even then, there's still some motivation in there to be selfish, because, like, we're going to steal the Rangers thunder. So yeah. it's like they're egotistical superheroes. Yeah. They're on the booster gold spectrum, if you will. Booster gold. But then, yes. like, in later seasons, they start getting better character arcs. And then we get their best character arc in space. Apparently, they're going to keep them hidden from you. Mm. Uh, um, boy, they get redeemed a little bit. Oh, yeah. What do you yeah. mean? I thought their best performance was in Lost Galaxy. Get the fuck out of here. The one episode. <laughs> get the fuck Excuse out. Excuse you. Two. No, Skull one episode, bulk four episodes. Oh, okay, it actually is four. I was just saying two, like yeah. they come back for a cameo later and that's it. Thinking about Skull, I just found out this today. Originally, Skull was supposed to play Zack. No, I thought Zach? you meant he was supposed to be Billy. Oh, Billy. Yeah, sorry, Billy. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Can you imagine Jason Narvi as Billy? Man, with the glasses, like I, I can't. I'm sorry. It's, it, it's the laugh. It's permanently in my head as Skull. Read the Steed of Evil or the Jutsu footage. Kind of enjoyable, but this is like the first time we see it. There's way more better episodes with the Jutsu mm -hmm. footage. Way better music later on because the music in this one. Ugh. But then we got yeah. the classic. Badass fight music later on, and the Go Green Ranger Go, and then later on when White Ranger shows up, Go White Ranger Go. They just change the I, lyrics. I never liked that song. Which one? Go Green Ranger. White Ranger Tiger Power. Really? I yeah, no, it's we. It's the lyrics for me. It's like it's it's okay, but I prefer Go Green Ranger Go. So the first monster in the Jutsu footage, pretty cool looking for what it was. It kind of went out in a non honor way. Like I mean, they're evil and stuff, but man, you just kill it from behind when it's not looking. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All good. 
Oh, and all these three episodes were really fun to watch. Till the next time, we get three more episodes with more Jew 2 footage. And that's pretty much it. It's been fun, you guys. Another great episode in the books. Yep. In the pocket. Nice. Another one in the hole. They be fast and they be slow. Baby or shark. We be fast and do, 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 baby shark. Do, 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 do. How about die? Yes. <laughs> So in conclusion, I've been dead Shroob. Let it be known that this universe is doomed. Doomed. I'm humanoid and feed your kids. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. You gotta come up with something different. I'm trying. I'm trying. I am the Doif. I worship Lokar. I love you all. May the power protect you. By the way, Lokar returns in a few, se- a few decades later. Bye.